uh, the horses. horses. So there you go, there's a connection. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, David. Good morning, everybody. I can tell you there are some Scottish horses in the hottest hotel here in Cheltenham. This is the special horse hotel where the, the riders and the runners, especially the horses themselves from Scotland and Ireland, come and stay. Over 250 over the course of the festival. One's just coming back in for their breakfast this morning. Uh, hay and oats. Yeah, the ones from England tend to come just for the day from wherever they're based, but the ones from further afield, Ireland and Scotland, come and stay in this brilliant hotel. I'm not allowed in, it's just for horses really. But they also told me that the island trainers bring their own water because some of their horses are a bit fussy, they like to drink the water they're used to. So there we are, a little fact about the hotel behind me. And they're celebrating 100 years of Gold Cup history today, the 100th anniversary of the famous race. And I've been to Northumberland to meet the oldest living winner, Stan Hayhurst. He won back in 1958 on board Kirsten. He's now 90, I went to see him at home in Northumberland. Welcome home, Stan, welcome home. Yeah. Back to where it all started, at Hexham Racecourse and the stunning landscape of Northumberland, where Stan Hayhurst rode his first winner in 1950. One of the things you think about, which is daft, you think, oh, am I going to ride another winner? You know, <laughs> yes, you do, you do, it's all in your mind. Not only did Stan ride hundreds more, but eight years later, he rode the winner Kirsten in the 1958 Cheltenham Gold Cup. Kirsten, who was second last year, still holding polar flight as they race towards the line. But polar flight coming at her very fast now. With 50 yards to go, it's Kirsten still holding polar flight. Just holding polar flight by the look of it. The judge may call upon the camera. In third place is Kay Donald. She was a mare. You couldn't squeeze at the fence because she would do an exaggerated sort of jump, you know. And uh, so it was a question of getting her settled and then taking up the running and cruising down the hill. So I thought, this is it. I thought, I'm going to win it. Once you get within the strides of the last fence, you've got that roar, even men, you have that Cheltenham roar. I was very proud for the North because we didn't have many top-class winners in those days from the north of England. I mean, we were, we were second class, you know. Afterwards, there wasn't then the life-changing fame and fortune that Gold Cup winners enjoy today. No interviews, went straight in the photograph, unsaddled and walked into the waiting room. So what did you get? Nothing. No, no plaques, no cups, no glasses, no anything. No bottles of champers. You had to buy it yourself? I had to buy them. <laughs> That's what you spent your winnings on, was it? Yeah, some of it. Back at Hexham, the weighing room makes Stan feel hungry these days as he remembers what he did then to lose enough weight for races. I lived on carrots and oranges for a week. I was an apprentice, I had to do what I was told. But once you sign your indentures, you've signed your life away. Yeah. The, the, uh, the trainer becomes your parents. Well, Stan, this is a special moment, I know, for you because you've never actually seen the gold. In this special anniversary year at Cheltenham, it was time then to properly honour Stan as one of the jockeys who's won what some regard as the World Cup of jump racing. He'd never even seen it until this moment. You see, 1958. Kirsty. Yep. What does that mean to see the well, horse's that's, name that, there? That's, that's the important thing. That's why you do these things, isn't it? And your yeah. name will be in the book forevermore yeah. as the winner. Kirsten, the winner, number 15, called at once without any hesitation, no recourse to the camera. Kirsten, owned by Mr. G. H. Moore, trained by Verley Buick and ridden by Stan Hayhurst, is the winner of the 1958 Gold Cup. Oh, what a special moment for Stan. Now 90, he'll be watching on with pride today as they celebrate 100 years of the Gold Cup today. And he's part, very much part of that history. Let's bring in Nevin Truesdale, the CEO of the Jockey Club. A special moment for Stan, very different in 58, Nevin, to what it is now for the winner when they come in, of yeah. all the publicity, life-changing moment. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I mean, it has been life-changing just for Paul Tynand, who's the current Gold Cup 
holding jockey. He's won it three times in the last five years, and it's been truly life-changing stuff for him. I was actually lucky enough to be a friend of, a, of, of, of an owner of Coney Gray from who won the Gold Cup in 2015, and he has also said to me many times, Devon, it changed my life. And that's what this race, that's what this trophy does for people. Um, it is such an iconic sporting trophy, never mind racing trophy, and it's been on tour this year around the country to celebrate the 100th anniversary. We've had it at all, all um, far, far-flung places of the United Kingdom, France, Ireland. It's been to a conference at Hampton Court with, with, with so many other big sporting trophies as well. So it's a fantastic celebration of an iconic race. What has made it such an iconic um, moment here in, in the sporting year, do you think? Over 100 years, obviously, the history, all the, the special moments, the special winners. Yeah, I think every sport has got that sort of elite set of trophies that people want to win. You know, the FA Cup, the Ashes, Wimbledon. In, in racing terms, the Cheltenham Gold Cup is at the absolute pinnacle of that. It is the one, if you're a national hunt trainer, owner... Um, stable staff, jockey, even breeder, it's the one they all want to win. And this day is the day that they all look forward to. Just to have a runner in the Gold Cup, never mind to win it, is so special for people. And it has, I mean, the, the names of the winners echo down the years. You know, the, the Golden Millers, the Escarzos, the Cottage Rakes, and more recently, the Cottage Stars, the Best Bits, you know, the, yeah. the Gallop and the Champ, who, who he thinks the potential to be on to be just as great as some of those previous winners. To cap an amazing uh, week for Willie Mullins, who made it 100 winners at Cheltenham. So, what could be the legacy now? Now, after this this milestone moment, yeah, I mean we've um, thought very hard of us. We've done a lot of work this year in terms of really using the hundredth anniversary of the Gold Cup as a really a, to elevate um, the appeal of the Gold Cup and of the sport, and to really, as you say, Mike, leave that legacy. Um, we're going to be introducing um, measures, concepts to for a hundred thousand school children, hundred thousand children to be exposed to racing over the next ten years as a celebration of the hundredth anniversary of the Gold Cup, and that will be through community days, through our partners our, with, with Gallagher, Box for Kids, all the different charities we work with, bringing young people into more and more race courses to get them into this wonderful sport. Stuff. And who's your tip? They're talking about celebrating. Who's going to be celebrating? We might see Gallop and Deschamps coming in any moment. Is can anybody yes. beat him? So I think I think on this ground, I think he's going to be hard to beat. Um, he's a fantastic horse. Um, but if I was to pick one other, wouldn't be discouraging you from each way on Brave Man's Game. Paul Nichols had a good winner yesterday yeah. in the Pertemps final with Mon Morale. Yeah. Brave Man's Game. It was a good horse. Finished second last year. I could see okay. him doing something. Levin, yep. thanks very much Thank indeed. You, the sun is out. It's beautiful now, a bit windy. But yeah, it's going to be a wonderful afternoon of celebrating 100 years of Cheltenham Gold Cup history. And we're just waiting to get a close up glimpse of the potential defending champion and winner any second now going in to have its well earned breakfast.